The PowerMac G5 was initially released in 2003, and it lasted until 2006. They were the first of the all-aluminum design that would last until the 2012 Mac Pro, and recently made a reappearance in 2019 with the uh, well-priced and updated Mac Pro. The big difference with the Power Mac and some of the, the Mac Pros is the processor inside. They ranged from a single-core power PC uh, all the way up to a quad-core uh, water-cooled CPU. So actually four physical CPUs. There were no extra cores on each of these models. The specific machine that you're looking at here is a dual CPU model, 1.8 gigahertz, released in uh, late 2003. The G5 was known to be quite hungry on power, and sadly the software support has also died off in the last five years, so it's really getting aged. The last operating system that it supported uh, natively from Apple was actually 10.5 Leopard. But ideally, you want to install 10.4, which was the last version to support natively running OS 9 in a special vir uh, virtualization mode that was called Mac Classic. So that's going to be the goal of this video. Okay, the moment of truth. Sort of loud. Okay, so we've got nothing. All right, first step. Let's go ahead and get inside, reset everything. Um, maybe check and see what components are potentially missing. All right, on to the next stage. All right, so I did some additional reading online, and, and some of these older G5s, uh, the BIOS battery is just dead. So I'm not sure if that's what I'm running into, but um, what I'm going to do is open it up. I've unplugged it. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to actually reset the BIOS, maybe even pull the battery out and see if it boots that way. Uh, try a couple different things, see if I can get the chime. And then if playing around with the battery causes anything to work, I'll have to just bite the bullet and buy a battery. Now, the interesting thing with the battery, it's what, seven to nine dollars. Ooh, plastic piece. Seven to nine dollars shipped. And uh, buying a new logic board is like 35. So <laughs> the battery in these is becoming the most expensive part. But damn, it looks really cool on the inside. Um, even if I get this working, I'm tempted to still try and rip, replace, maybe even, I mean, it'd be cool to be able to see into it. It's too bad this thing doesn't sort of stay in place. I'll have to see if I can get it to stay um, and just replace this with a, a more updated internals to play with because we've got a, oops, we've got a pretty garbage looking video card. No hard drive. We do have a disk drive. So DVD, maybe CD. Um, and then dual processors. I think this is the 1.8. Yep, 1.8. Uh, it does look like four sticks of memory. Pretty intense fan system. Uh, pretty cool that the plastic shield sits in here to drive the air through as well. So a lot of cool stuff. And there's the battery right there. So we're going to tear that out, uh, see if we can get this thing to boot. OK. So now I'm going to unplug everything from, oh wait, what? Hmm. Okay, well, uh, I took out the battery, I unplugged it, I plugged it all back in, I took out all of the cords and I heard it chime. So then I plugged the cords back in, uh, it didn't chime, but I got some sort of a boot screen. So I think, I think this is where I can tell it to Yeah. So maybe it, maybe it is half failed. <laughs> We're getting there. Maybe, maybe the battery being dead, I don't know. I'm going to order a battery, wait until that gets here, see if that actually fixes some of these uh, what seem like uh, sporadic issues. If it doesn't, then there must be another component in it going bad because it's, it's half working. It, it did chime 
and it did just show something, but uh, yeah, uh, it's not predictable yet. Okay, making progress. So inside of the old uh, Power Mac here, we've got a switch next to the memory that resets, from what I can tell, the, the PRAM, or sort of the persistent state that the machine knows about. Um, I replaced the battery, reset the PRAM, and I'm getting a consistent chime. Now, sometimes when I have different USB devices plugged in to this machine, it will not boot correctly. But um, removing those, restarting seems to get it going. So fairly consistently getting the chime, fairly consistently getting into the boot menu, fairly consistently getting into open firmware, which is actually, I guess, the equivalent of the old terminal. I haven't looked into it too much, but it is the uh, sort of the boot terminal that you can get into and send commands to this machine to sort of override its default um, capabilities. So boot from USB, for example, boot from CD uh, if you can't get it to, to see the CD on startup. Uh, now, what's weird is I, I've been having a lot of problems just getting the disk to open. I've gone the route now of trying to get it to boot from USB, trying to get it to boot from disk, but I can't get the disk to open on startup, so I have to go into open firmware, send an eject CD command, it ejects it, and then I can put a disk in there. But I haven't been able to correctly burn a DVD for uh, OS Tiger, for example, to get it to actually load that up. So um, it's been a learning experience for sure, to say the least. A lot, uh, really, a lot can go wrong with a power PC based machine um, because it's older, right? You can't use the niceties of uh, tell it to boot off of a simple USB drive. It doesn't even seem to find some of them, right? Uh, it doesn't have that sort of underlying capability within this option menu like a newer Mac, for example. So let me show exactly where I'm at now and then we'll go to the next steps that I've got in place. So oop, command option OF. Got the chime. And after about 15, 20 seconds, uh, it will then um, turn on the screen and get us into the open firmware. There we go, okay. So within the open firmware, you can basically send different uh, commands to tell the machine to, for example, eject the CD. And in fact, one of the commands is boot CD as well. So that's nice. Um, I tried burning a, and this is the first time that I've purchased DVDs to burn things uh, in probably 10 years. So it's definitely been interesting. I actually used my older 2007 iMac to actually burn two different uh, DVDs. Oh jeez, this is why I don't like DVDs. Um, Mac OS 10.4 and 992 or 922. Um, and 922, I actually was able to get that to work on my iBook, which I'll be doing a video on as well. Sort of a funky, uh, cool little machine. And then I'm gonna actually try putting that in here. I can't remember if the G5 actually supported um, 922, but let's see if that works. 10.4 burnt, at least the way that I burnt it here, which was just telling um, an ISO to burn within El Capitan, didn't work. For 922, it did work. So I, it might just be the type of download that I got here. So we're going to try telling it to boot CD, and we'll see here. Technically, PowerPC, PowerPC, load size is too small. I don't know what that means, so I'm going to have to look that up. Um, but we're getting somewhere. I haven't decided yet to just tear this thing apart and uh, put a Ryzen machine into it yet because I still want to try running Linux or, or Mac OS uh, 10.4. I want to I try it first, see how the experience is, and then probably tear it apart based on all this experience. I don't want to have to be burning DVDs to get these machines to work. Um, so there we go. That is the progress that I've made. Now on to the next step. Check what load size too small is. See if maybe Maybe I can get some other way for this machine to, to boot, like install um, something on the disk in it or something like that. But I don't know. There we go. That's where we're at. Okay, so I wanted to give a conclusion here. You probably noticed that during this video, my outfit changed about 
three different times, four different times, uh, and time passed quite a lot of time. So this gives me an opportunity to come back and reflect on the Power Mac G5 that I was trying to fix up. Uh, a few notes here. One, uh, I did not get it to fully work, right? So uh, open firmware and then halfway into booting, uh, Lubuntu, right, which is a uh, modified version of Ubuntu that supposedly has Power Mac support from about 2016. Uh, it would get partially through the process and then every single time hang. So each cycle there, 20 minutes of trying to get it to work. Now, I'm not going to blame all the issues that I had on purely this Power Mac being old and not really having uh, easy functionality to get an operating system installed via USB. Uh, I was never able to get it to recognize any form of uh, Mac OS. I only got it to finally start to boot uh, Linux from a USB drive, but that's about as far as I got. I, I can't fully blame it on the hardware. I can't fully blame it on the software, but I do know that if you're gonna go down this path of trying to work on an older Power Mac, uh, I think the biggest blocker I ran into is just getting the operating system loaded onto a hard drive. Now, it may have even been that the, you know, the, the SSD that I was using is too new, right? So older hardware, especially these Power Macs that use a very particular CPU that is no longer supported by any operating system, just really is a pain. Uh, what did I learn from this? Don't do it, right? Just don't do it. I'm all out of pocket, $70, right? Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't get one for another $70. Uh, I think that it'll still be a cool project to put a more modern set of technology into this case because it's a really cool case, really cool look. I'm gonna try and preserve as much of it as possible, but I just don't think there's any reason to actually have a Power Mac G5 running in its current state unless it already was uh, running. And, and great if it is, um, but in this case, I totally failed getting this thing to function again, and I don't have the spare parts, and I don't have the motivation to purchase the spare parts to even see if I could get it to work. I don't have the motivation to go and buy uh, Mac OS Tiger for you know the legitimate copies that you can get out there for 60, 70, you know, $80, right? Um, just to find out that maybe the DVD drive is broken in this thing. So a lot of problems with it just being older, software, older hardware, older CPU stack, unsupported software. Um, I wouldn't personally uh, say that this is a good project for anybody. Uh, it's much easier to, to buy one of the newer Mac Pros and fix up them uh, with the Intel chips. Just a lot of compatibility uh, issues with this, this older model. So that's my only takeaway here. Don't do it unless you're a real glutton for punishment. Uh, if you already have one, that's awesome. Um, I wanted to see it working. I wanted to at least you know play around with it a little bit. I've heard that they can run Linux fairly well, uh, but I've also seen that there's a lot of complaints about you know, modern uh, niceties like YouTube or Facebook are basically, there's just enough JavaScript on the page that these older CPUs can't even handle it. So, you know, maybe it's time for these guys to just uh, fade into the, into the sort of collector's editions now. Um, but that's enough for this video. Um, I spent weeks and hours of time trying to get an old computer to work and uh you know what that's about it i think that's about enough time spent on that all right till the next one when i saw this thing up and uh, install a modern computer into it